Hey folks, Ari here with Fit Pro VR. Today, I actually am not in this video. I mean, I'm in this video right now, but the person that's gonna be the star of this video is not me. It's actually my wife. So my wife is a history teacher who knows way more about culture, art, uh, history, obviously, archeology, span than I could ever know. So what I did was I strapped her to the VR headset and had her take a look at two different games. We had her dive into Other Sight, which is a VR walking tour with excellent graphics. And we also had her jump into the Anne Frank experience. You're gonna wanna watch that one. Stick around, she's got an incredible insight. My name is Ari with Fit Pro VR. Her name is Sarah with Fit Pro VR. And this is not a fitness video. Let's go. Okay. We are so at the start of the 20th century. A place in the heart of Madrid, right. an oasis where time seems to stand still. <sighs> okay, so now I'm at a different orange dot, and the guy shut up finally, so that's good news. All right, and I can pick stuff up. Nope, okay, this is... All right, that was probably expensive. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend to be one of my students right now. <laughs> Um, it's like it's like a pestle and mortar. You like put the thing and then you We have one upstairs. Okay, I can spin the globe. That's cute. A gift for his son to see. Bathing oh. time. Shh, shh. Gross. This makes me so dizzy the walking in here. <laughs> like I suppose this would be nice if you were someone who likes to casually and quietly visit museums and you couldn't get out of the house. But like, I think my kids would be like, "What if you just given us mess? This is so boring." So I can, I can pick up. These are code. among the most ubiquitous objects in Tokyo. They are everywhere, just it's doing their job. If you see them, don't ask questions. Japanese people always respect signs, simple and effective. Westerners might think they're for roadworks, but here, it could be for anything. There's another one. I like I can just throw them. I like how they tell you. Japanese people respect the science of the traffic cones and then they give you the permission to just pick them up and throw them. So already I get to be an obnoxious American like one minute into this. Huh. Okay. Okay. Are they like nostalgic there is a for this? I'm just confused because we have lots of alleyways and they're usually pretty gross. But this one does not smell like urine. So that helps. I like thought they call it the carrot building. Oh look. Is that boof? <laughs> Look at how many. They drink a lot of vov out here. Um, wow. And I guess I like how it like twists and stuff. And like how you can kind of meander like a... Like you're traveling. It would be nice if there were people here though. I feel like it's probably not a ghost town in real life. It's probably like... Um, you know, bustling with humans working and stuff. But then I probably also would feel super out of place. I wonder if I can meet here. I guess I feel like such an American. Because I'm like, this is going to get stolen. That's going to get stolen. The... Cone's definitely stolen. That parking lot's my that parking spot's mine. Like I but I forget that like not everyone is violent criminals. <laughs> like perhaps maybe we are. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mess up a bunch more cones so I feel more at home and then go somewhere else. <laughs> Alright. Oh I'm just gotcha. Don't worry, bud. I can't pick this one up. <gasps> oh, the one cone that has defeated me. There's like Together. a we interesting whatever the horizon is. people are here. But like that's really hard for me to hear the two things. Like the way the sound is, like I I have a hard time processing things um when I, there's multiple sounds going on at the same time. Um, which is pretty common, I think, for a lot of kids. Um as well. So that might be a challenge. If there's a way to turn off the the Spanish in favor of the English, that would Alright. Like on like like, this stuff is cool. Um, it's very interesting to, to visit, and I, I like this. I mean, I've seen some churches in Europe and stuff before, so this is very, like, reminiscent of that, and it's really neat to go to one um, without actually leaving your house. Um, that being said, like, in a classroom, I'm trying to think, like, what standard or what subject it could be teaching kids where this would be, like, super relevant. Maybe if I had a medieval class period and we just want to talk about like architecture. Um, and maybe I would do some kind of like, what did you see? What do you think you're seeing? What do you wonder more about? Or like, what did you notice? Like, what were the objects? What does this say about the people who built it? So 
Um, I would probably need some kind of like guidance for them. I probably couldn't just pop a VR set on their head and be like, go walk around. Um, like that's fun. Uh, and I would have it as like a, maybe like a reward or play thing in the class. But if I wanted to connect it to actual education um, and, you know, justify why I'm doing this in my classroom, I would definitely need some kind of guiding lesson plan. I like that you can pick up the stuff and look at it. I think that's really cool. Um, I, I really, I really wish like that the Smithsonian would do this. Like this, would, if, if the Smithsonian did this, I would buy a whole class set. I would donor choose the crap out of it and we would, we would go bananas on it. Um, because I think like that I could really get away with like more historical objects themed around a particular topic. Like if we, for example, when you go to the, the Smithsonian, they have that whole room on America at war, just like from the beginning to present and like walking around that room and picking stuff up would be awesome. Um, I mean, I know I could take my kids to Smithsonian. It's not that far of a drive. But they're probably cheaper than buying a bunch of VR sets. But if I live across the country and can't afford to get on an airplane with, you know, 100 middle schoolers, then that would be pretty cool. But yeah, like it's it's cool. It's nice. It's peaceful. Um, but I don't necessarily know how I could incorporate it in a classroom without more structure on my end with what I want the kids to do with the information. Like, other than just walk away saying, wow, that was cool, or wow, that was fun. Um, what would they actually learn from this? Where'd you go, Minnie? There we are. Okay, so now we're going to Cuba, which I actually really want to go to Cuba. So just so you know, this is going to make me want to go to Cuba, so you're going to have to take me there. Yeah, especially after last night when we went to that Cuban restaurant. Ooh, see, I told you they had those those uh, old Bel Airs and Chevys. Oh, I forgot. He's not talking. Hold on, buddy. Give me a sec. No, no, no. No, no. Settings. Sound. I do want to hear what you know. It's hard work. These horses cause endless trouble because of their age and because it's impossible to get spare parts. Yeah, but they're cool. In truth, there is a lack of logistics for this spare parts market. Imagine we have to order them from Argentina. Often these spare parts are made right here, by hand, in the traditional way. That is why you still see these cars driving around Cuba. It's because of skilled people who have adapted to the circumstances. I was not expecting to just like have a sudden conversation with a guy about like supply chain problems for old 57 Chevys, but okay. Um, that's fine. I like that I can pick up the hammer. I don't know why I need to pick up a hammer, um, but I'm going to pick up it. I'm going to think about picking up a hammer. Give me your hammer. What's going on here? All right. Well, it says I can pick up the hammer. No, tools! All right, finally. Thank you for being interesting. Okay, let's... Am I just fixing a car this whole time? Like, is, there, is that all Cuba is? <laughs> car, car stuff? All right. My dad would like it, I guess. <laughs> Although, commies, so maybe he wouldn't. Um, okay. This is pretty. It reminds me a lot of Santo Domingo and the Dominican and, like, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um... I like so far this has just been a car conversation. <laughs> I don't know, not what I was expecting. But like I guess what I like the liveliness that I'm expecting with Cuba, I uh, I don't know. It's just a bunch of cars and no These cars have lasted not world. only due to their materials. But I do like the cars. They are cute. They're nice. So it looks like there's two options, a story mode and a tour mode. Um Hmm. My guess is the story mode is maybe more like a guided tour. I would like to start with the... On the 12th of June, 1929, okay. Anne Frank is born in Frankfurt, Germany. Oh, precious. She's the second child of Jewish parents, Otto and Edith Frank. Okay. Disting anti-Jewish okay, sentiments, yeah, yeah. blame the Jews for many of Germany's problems. And Hitler's government soon passes laws that turn Jews into second-class citizens. I appreciate having the subtitles. Um, I also appreciate just how many, like, primary sources there are. It, like, really kind of brings it to life. This is a very, like, succinct, sort of simplified version of As a result, Nazi party. But German that's perfect Jews for, to leave like, and seek middle schoolers. The Frank family moves to Great question. The primary source is um, something that was created at the time of an event. So, like, a photograph, a letter, um, a recording, a you know, a speech, just something that happened when history happened. Whereas, like, a secondary source would be uh, what the man's actually saying at the bottom, where we're, like, synthesizing all the things together. Um, but then in May 1940, or, like, a textbook shortly or something. Shortly after the start of the Second World War, so, like, this nice Nazi blend Germany of secondary and primary, like, here's a video, 
This is all good. An oppressive regime. This would keep the, the attention of a child, too, of like a 14-year-old. In 19... Are you sure I threw it away or burned it? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. I sometimes feel intrusive when I teach pieces of Anne Frank's, like, diary, um, just because it's like so... It's so you, you always talk to the students about, like, when you're looking at a primary source, like a diary, like, who's the intended audience? And in her case, her diary audience was herself. Um, and here we are reading it. It feels like such a boundary stomp. But then, like, it's also so important because it reminds us, like, that these were human beings. All right, so point and click to move. Okay, that's helpful. So then, um, if I were, like, doing this in class, which I totally would, actually, I think we're going to read Mouse this year. Um, this would be a great companion piece. So then I could have questions for them, like... What would it feel like to be in a room like this with your family for two years? Like, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> um, my my uh, teenage experience probably wouldn't have been awesome. Um, so the fact that, you know, like this just puts into perspective just like how desperate and scary the times were. Wait, wait. So like that's what it would take to get me to be stuck in a room like this with my family. Like just the actual fear of us dying. We always um, look forward to those Saturdays pick up the book but it did talk to me and just uh, that phrase of like you don't know how important books are to people who are locked up just immediately makes me think of like people in prison as well and like how books are such an important part and libraries are such an important part of like incarceration um and how like you know when we privatize stuff like that that's one of the things sometimes we lose um so there's a lot of connections to the to current day which then would be a question I would do for my students too like what connections can you make to the present um and that's one I remember this from the museum um yeah that's the part that like really kicks you in the stomach is like this is just such a teenage girl's bedroom you know she just has like movie stars on the wall and like pictures and like all of my kids this is what their rooms look like this is what my room look like and if you didn't know the circumstances you would just think eh, it's you know two teenage sisters having to share a room tight quarters um but the reality is so much so much sadder so much more sad um they're just such normal people, you know? It really humanizes it. So that way when people try to bring in, like, oh, it didn't happen, it just makes me want to fight them. I hope I don't have that kid this year. Um, Writing lets me get rid of it Or that it wasn't that bad. Or Hitler had some good ideas. That was definitely a phrase that came out by a child at one point. <sighs> but, like, I mean, the reality is at that age, they're just saying stuff that they either heard on the internet or that their mom or dad says. And, like, that's sad. Talk about people being indoctrinated. As of yesterday. Um, I do like that this tour, you don't just wander aimlessly. I appreciate that they make you do stuff. Um, I think that helps a lot with, like, making sure you get the most out of the tour. Oh, me? Oh, I see. Oh, I have to physically move? What? Time that no, 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 no. I have to. Uh-uh. This is too to much. To Paris I have to move. To use my legs. To learn the language. But, yeah. It's just fascinating. Like, you can learn a lot by what people hang on their walls at home. You would have learned that I was going to marry Leonardo DiCaprio. So, um, as soon as he shows up at the door. <laughs> Margo and mother are Not in well. <laughs> it didn't actually happen. Um, but, you know, you know, it's still a few years left in me. <laughs> it's 830. Come old, here now. now. <laughs> you can't run the water anymore. Other people lived here. And then you had to, like, just no privacy whatsoever but it was this or you know die and then this after two BBC years they s- the this is the day didn't even matter you know someone turned him in more museums should do something like this this was a very nicely done one um yeah no that was really well done i appreciated that i would use that in my class hands down and it looks like yeah now i can just tour it whenever i want um, which is cool because I did the story mode part. Um, so yeah, that was really good. I liked that quite a bit.